Midas Prayer Night, okay, we do that every last Wednesday of the month. So we are going to jump right into that. Um, but before we do, I have a few things. I figure before we pray, I wanted to encourage you along the lines of prayer um, and just stir you up because if we're going to pray, we might as well do it right. Amen? So, um, you know, concerning prayer, I feel like... <sighs> I feel like sometimes we forget actually how powerful prayer is and how important it is. Because if we believed in the efficacy of prayer and how potent and how powerful it is, then we would take it so much more seriously than we take it. We would actually employ it in our life like our life depended on it, like our situations and challenges could actually be moved by it. So prayer, our prayer life is actually a good barometer of where our faith is. Amen? Because your, your prayer life will show you really how much you believe what's in this book, right? And there's a lot of like things that sometimes we do in prayer that we've maybe picked up from religion. And we got we to gotta shake some of that off, right? So I'm not going to make you do the, the whole Taylor Swift thing. But um, we just got to shake some of that stuff off. Amen? We just, just turn to your neighbor and say, shake it off. Shake it off. So we're going to do that today. We're going to get into some truths about the principles of prayer so that when you're praying, you can pray effectually on purpose and you can move some things because we're called to move mountains. That's not just like a, a cute little Christian cliche. That's for real. We're called to move mountains through our prayer. Amen. Um, so the main scripture that I wanted to hone in on tonight is 2 Corinthians 10 um, and it's verse 4. <laughs> yep. Verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow, somebody say overthrow, and destruction of strongholds. So when we're talking about an overthrow, we're talking about a, literally a turning upside down. When's the last time you've seen someone like overthrow a table, right? Like you've ever seen somebody mad, I mean hopefully you haven't seen that in real life, but maybe on TV you've seen somebody mad and they like just knock over a whole table, right? Like that thing is overthrown. It is completely tipped upside down. So we are called to do that spiritually against the forces of darkness, amen? And that sounds like super spiritual, the forces of darkness. But listen, there are actual things that are trying, there are spiritual entities at work that believe the word of God more than you do because those spiritual entities are actually trying to keep the word of God and the truth of God's word hidden from you, right? So if you're going to be in battle, we can, we know, like, like we were just singing, we know that he's our champion, that we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. I've talked about this many times that, you know, people, they get so afraid of the devil and they want to compare like the power of God to the power of the devil. The devil has no power except the power that you give him. It's not that he doesn't have power. It's that to the child of God who knows who they are and that you recognize and acknowledge that you're seated with Christ in heavenly places and that's the place that you, that's your command center. That's where you live. That's where you operate from. When you operate out of that place, his power is absolutely um, obsolete. His power is like, it doesn't work, right? When you operate in your power, right? But you have to operate in your power, amen? Because otherwise he'll, he'll talk you out of it every day of the week. You've got to live spiritual. And one of the ways that you live spiritual is through your prayer life. Amen. That's how we, we get ourselves hooked up to what the word of God says. And that's how we get ourselves to actually believe what it says and to operate from that place of being seated with Christ. Amen. So, you know, but when it's talking about the overthrow of strongholds and the destruction of strongholds, that's what we're called to do. We're called to overthrow some things. We're called to destroy demonic forces. We're called to destroy anything that would hinder us from walking in our God-given destiny. Amen. So anything that comes to contest your victory in Christ, you're called to just walk all over it. You're called to overthrow it. Amen. And that should be our living reality. But what happens is when you don't actually believe this, then you don't actually consider the weapon of prayer as a mighty weapon. But your weapon of prayer is a powerful weapon. And the more you believe that, the more you live it out. The way you walk out your prayer life is actually, will define to you how much you believe in prayer, in the power of prayer. Everyone, everyone says, oh, I believe in the power of prayer, the power of prayer. But the way you actually walk in your prayer life really tells the story about do you believe in it? Do you believe in how powerful prayer is? But, and that's why we got to employ our prayer because if we don't, then it's like going into battle 
with no weapon. Like, you're not going to be on a front line just, like, headbutting people and think you're going to get away with it, right? Like, I, I've never seen, you know, I mean, not that you should ever watch that movie, but, like, you know, the Sparta movie, like, this is Sparta. Like, those jokers were fierce, right? They had, like, shields and swords, and they weren't playing any games. They didn't just come up to the battlefield with, like, a mean look on their face, you know? They didn't just come up to the battlefield just ready to, like, headbutt some people. Like, they came with a sword. They came ready to do business. Amen? And that's what we have in prayer. We have a sword. We have something that can uh, take off some heads of some things. But that is not going to do you any work if you leave it at home. It's not going to do you any good if you leave your sword at home, right? It's not going to do you any good if you leave it in its sheath, right? So we have to believe that we have the tools to overcome and then we actually have to use them. <laughs> but listen, when you know how powerful prayer is, you will put it to work. But you know what, and I talked to somebody about this the other day. I talk about this all the time, actually, because a lot of times in other countries, you know, Pastor Alex and I, we've traveled in so many other places, and in these third world countries, you see, like, you see such, like, extraordinary miracles, and it's because the people over there, they don't have any other option, you know? Here, people have 20 other options before they turn to the Lord. They're like, why do I need God? Why do I need that? You know, oh, you know, I, I, um, I, got, I got this, well, I, there's an there's a over-the-counter medicine for that, I'll just go get the over-the-counter medicine for it, you know. So, like, when they're facing a challenge, um, when they're facing a mountain or whatever, rather than the first, their default response be like, okay, time to go to work in prayer, their default response is, let me Google on WebMD and see, you know, what are the things we can do, what essential oil can I put on this, what lawyer can help me with this, what, you know, what girlfriend am I going to call and, and vent? I just need to vent. I just need to vent. No, you need to pray. You don't need to vent. You need to pray. A lot of people are talking more about their problems than they're praying about them. And then they wonder why nothing happens. <laughs> you know, they're complaining about their situation more than they're praying about it. Hello. Right? Or they're trying to self-soothe or self-medicate self or self-help themselves to their answer. When the answer is found in the word of God and through prayer. Amen. So we, we believe that, right? We believe that. Everybody in this room, we believe that. But do we really believe it? Because if you really believe it, then you will take your prayer life seriously. And I was actually so excited to find out because I forget which day of the month it is, like, all the time. So when I realized tonight was prayer night, I was like, yes. Because I don't know about the rest of you guys, but, you know, school starting back, everything. It's been crazy, right? There's, it's been like, whoo. Like, it's been, there's been a lot going on. And it's especially, you know, for you mamas out there or anybody just juggling a lot and spinning lots of plates, sometimes the easiest thing to to kick to the end of the day or the end of the to-do list is your, is your prayer time. But we can't afford for that to happen, right? So I was really excited for tonight to know that tonight was a prayer night because I was like, yes. Like that's, I'm so grateful that we had this time set aside. And it's good to have it at church, but it's got to be part of our lifestyle. Amen. It's got to be part of our daily habit. Um, and it is a habit. And just like any other habit, you got to work on it, right? It doesn't just, Lord, I want my prayer life to be better. No, like you actually have to like, you got to make time for it. Just like you make time for anything. You got to pencil it in. You got to schedule yourself. I don't know what you got to do. But you got to make it a priority in your life. Amen. But don't leave the weapon that you have in prayer at home. Don't leave it on the shelf. Don't leave it in your sheath. When you show up to battle, you need to have a weapon that's going to work for you. And and being in the presence of the Lord like this and coming together and not forsaking the gathering of yourselves and coming together like you are tonight, we're like sharpening our sword. You know what I'm saying? The Bible says iron sharpens iron. So you're here and we're all just sharpening each other and sharpening each other in the word. Um, but Proverbs 3 says, flip over there if you got it. We're gonna, I got like a lot of scriptures and I'm, I'm going to talk really fast and try to cram it all in. So if I'm talking too fast, you can go watch the YouTube and just play it in slow motion. <laughs> Proverbs 3. Actually, this is a little life hack. If you are listening to a message, even like one of Pastor Alex's message, and you want to get it all, but just get it a little faster, just put it on like double time, and you'll just hear it. <laughs> it just, the, the message goes from two hours to one hour, and you're like, whoa, it's amazing. But um, he talks fast too, so. I don't know if you want, I don't know if you can keep up with all that. But for like some preachers that you listen to and they're really like slow, slow in their talking, that's like a great little life hack. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, Proverbs 3, 5. Lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind. Isn't it interesting that it says all your heart and your mind? So it's not just our heart because a lot of times we get our heart in the right place, but we got to get our mind in the right place too, okay? Get your heart and your mind in agreement and everything in life gets a lot easier. 
Uh, okay, so be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know, recognize, and acknowledge him and he will direct and make straight and plain your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Reverently fear and worship the Lord and turn entirely away from evil. Um, so in all your ways, acknowledge him. Amen. Don't be wise in your own eyes. And that's what we were just talking about. When you're facing a challenge, or sometimes it's not even a challenge. Sometimes it's just an opportunity of growth, an area you want to grow in. Whether it's a challenge, a mountain, a battle, whatever you want to call it. But whatever it is, when you approach that situation, don't approach it with your default setting being to go to your own understanding. And you trying to figure it out. And you trying to self-help yourself to the answer or to the next level. You can't. Be wise in your own eyes if you want to grow and progress the biblical way. You can go do it the world's way. I don't recommend it because at the end of the day, you'll have a lot of quote unquote, uh, maybe their version of success, but in eternity that shakes out to nothing. And that's not what we're working for here, right? We're running a heavenly race, amen? We're seeking a prize that only he can give, amen? And we want to have eternal fruit, right? And we want to run our race. We, you know, the Bible says that he gives you wealth without sorrow. He gives you a life worth living and he adds no sorrow to it. Amen. So we can do it his way, but we've got to do it his way. We can have it his way, but we got to do it his way. And his way is to not lean on our own understanding. Not, let, let that not ever be the default response. That, oh, you know, let me, let me go lean on what I think or what I know. Here's a thought. And for some of you, this will be like a, whoa, like a light bulb moment. You don't know everything there is to know about everything. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> like sometimes we operate out of our limited thinking and we think that that's all there is to the situation. You know, it's like, it's like we're looking at, you know, we're looking through one dimension at our challenge, at our problem, at our, at our breakthrough, at whatever it is. We're looking at it like one way and we think that that's the only way. But you got to know that the Bible says God's ways are higher than your ways. His thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So realize that there's another way. That there's something that you don't know about. There's information that you don't know about. And through prayer you can access it. Amen. So but you can't limit yourself to just what you can see. To just what you can comprehend. To just what, um, you know, all the options on paper look like. God's got, he's got more options than what you realize. Amen. But you, you access those things spiritually through prayer. We're supposed to operate at a different level. Amen. We're not supposed to operate just on our carnal level. We're supposed to operate at a different level entirely. We are ambassadors of the king. We're seated with Christ in heavenly places, right? So what does that mean? That means that we operate on a different level. We have different information. We have different authority. We operate with a different set of rules than what the world operates in. Amen? We operate with a different set of benefits than what the world operates in. And the way that we actually take that from being, you know, I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places and, and, and take it into like reality is through our faith and, and that comes by building yourself up in your most holy faith through prayer and through the word of God. Because here Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Amen. So this is how we access our supernatural realm and, the, and we can live in it. Amen. So first thing in, 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 in winning every battle and in winning through prayer is to show up, right? Show up to the battlefield with your actual weapon. So remember and, and really consider this. How much time am I actually giving to prayer? And how much it's not just about time because, listen, there's people who, you know, they'll, they'll lock themselves in their prayer closet all day in their little war room and, you know, and they're, and they're doing war and doing whatever it is that they do in their, in their war room. But they come out and nothing changes and we're going to talk about that. So it's not just about time. You know what I'm saying? Because you can spend five minutes in prayer and be so accurate in the Holy Ghost that you conquer whatever it is that you needed to conquer. You get peace, you get direction, you get the answer. In that five minutes of focus prayer time, then, you know, the next person who spends three hours in their prayer closet battling it out. <laughs> so it's not about just time. You know what I'm saying? But it's really the priority. Somebody say it's the priority. The priority you give to prayer shows how much you actually believe this word. Because prayer is is part of our action step. Amen? It's one thing to read the word of God, but and we can believe it. There's a lot of people that believe it. The devil himself believes it. He actually believes it probably more than you. And that's why he tries to, to hide the truth of God's word from you. 
So it's one thing to believe it, but then we have to go act on it, right? And the acting on it, a big part of acting on it is our prayer life, amen? And prayer life is not just locked away in the, in the closet. It's great to have that time, but you got to like take prayer on the go with you, amen? You pray in the car. You pray while you're doing groceries. You pray while you're working. You pray while you're doing whatever it is you're doing. It's a, it's a constant relationship, amen? It's a flow. It's not just, okay, Jesus, I give you your 10 minutes and then I'll see you later. I'll see you this time tomorrow, right? I mean, think of you, those of you who are married, if you did that with your spouse, it would not go well with you. Mm -mm. That was not going to last. <laughs> if you just, you know, you have your five, ten minutes together, together every morning, then you're like, all right, that's it. We'll see you next time. No, like that relationship requires time. It requires an investment. It, and, and sometimes that happens on the go as you're doing life, right? You spend time together. You communicate. And our relationship with the Holy Spirit should be like that too, to where we're constantly communicating with them. You have special, like, dedicated time, but then you take that relationship with you everywhere you go. Amen. So the first thing in prayer um, is not leaning on your own understanding, right? Um, and not treating prayer like an extracurricular Christian activity, right? I'm going to prayer service just like, you know, I'm going to whatever, you know, I'm going to bridge club. I don't even know what that is. But you know, like our prayer, our prayer life is not an extracurricular activity. It's actually supposed to be very much part of our lifestyle as believers. Amen. It should be our daily habit. Um, and it, it truly is the barometer of our faith. So, you know, but really consider that. Like how, and I, I'll be the first one to tell you, I can improve on this area. To make it more part of my daily routine, my daily lifestyle. You know, I want to grow in my prayer life this year like never before. So I'm committed to doing that. But it's one thing to think about it and talk about it. Like you have to actually take action steps to make prayer part of your daily habit. More. Maybe, maybe you already do it to some degree. But like let's take it up a notch. Amen. Let's take it to the next level. I promise you, you take your prayer life to the next level. Everything else in your life will be affected by that. And I'll say especially before you go talk to someone else about your problem, before you ask somebody else to pray with you about your problem, before you go online and Google things, let prayer be your priority. Let prayer be your number one response, not your last resort. Amen? Prayer needs to be the priority response, not your last resort. That's why people don't see results. People get annoyed because they, oh, you know, I prayed about it, but, you know. But, yeah, you prayed about it after you did, like, ten other things first. And then you're like, okay, well, I guess I better pray about it. Um, no, you have to pray like it is the only option you have. That's why we see miracles pop like popcorn in third world countries because it's not like, oh, like, honestly, literally. There were times where we'd see children there that their arms were crooked. Not because they were born like that, but because they broke their arm and they couldn't go to a hospital, so the arm just healed back crooked. Those kind of people see supernatural miracles because when they see that Jesus has an option on the table and it's the only option they got, they're like, okay, I'll take it. And with just simple childlike faith, they come and they receive their miracle. But here we have X, Y, Z options. We have, well, I can go here, I can do this, I can do that, I can do that. So, and then prayer and God's answer becomes the last resort instead of the first response. Amen? And then people wonder why they don't see results or why they're not, they're not growing in their faith. you got to put your faith to work. Amen? Amen? I've had, I've had little things, you know, that I'm like, oh, I should probably, you know, maybe, uh, it's like, oh, like I had a little rash. I should go, I, I should see the dermatologist for that or whatever. And, you know, and I went, I was like, why am I going to go see a dermatologist for a rash? I can just pray it away. You know what I'm saying? But it's like we're so conditioned to think like, Oh, like, oh, you have this. We got to go here. Oh, you have that. You got to go there. Like, because we grew up in a culture where, like, the doctor is the answer for everything. Or if it's not the doctor, it's something else. It's, you know, whatever. I don't know. Fill in the blank for what it is. That we have so many options in our information age. We have too much information. We have too many options. And you can have the results that those options bring you. Or you can have the results of the Bible. But you really can't have both. Know what I mean? So you got to pick which one you want. And I don't know about you, but I'm like, I'm contending in my faith for the little things and the big things. Amen? I'm not content to just take whatever option is available when I know I have this option. But this option requires me to not be lazy. This option requires me to dig into the word and actually stand on what I believe. Amen? And sometimes people don't like that because it requires a discipline. It requires a habit. Amen? It's like, this is a stupid example, but it's like, well, why am I going to go to the gym and work out when I can just go get liposuction? <laughs> you know, like shortcut, right? 
You're like, oh, I got the money there. I'll just go get liposuction. I don't got to go to the gym. I don't got to work out. I don't got to eat healthy. I can just, you know, go get my stomach stapled, whatever. <laughs> I know, stupid example. But you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like when people have those options easily available, then they don't, it's like, oh, I can just get that quick fix and I don't have to do the work. Your Bible requires you to do the work, amen? Because it is a, it is a spiritual habit that has to be conditioned in us. So, all right, so let me, let me get going. Okay, so, hmm. okay, I already said this, but just if you want to take notes. Your actions will speak to how much you believe prayer works, amen? So how much time and how much priority you put on prayer actually defines to you how much you truly believe it works. But my Bible says, let me tell you what my Bible says. I'm pretty sure your Bible says it too. But go to James chapter 5. See, this is, that's what's amazing about the Word of God. When you read it, you're like, wow, all that's in there. James chapter 5, verse 16. Confess to one another, therefore, your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins. And pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. There's that whole mind and heart thing working together. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Come on. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer. Somebody say continued. That's the thing with prayer. That's the thing with like us. <laughs> Is that if it's not instant, you know, we get annoyed. We're, we have become so conditioned in our fast-paced world that... It's like instant gratification. Social media gives that, us that instant gratification, right? The microwave, the um, whatever. You know, like how annoyed do you get when your Wi-Fi doesn't work or when it, it loads slow or something, right? Like, listen, I, I get a rude awakening of how terrible my patience is whenever that happens. But it's like, man, it's like why are we like that? Why are we so conditioned to having everything instantly? And it's like we've conditioned ourselves to if it's not instant, then it's not good. But not everything instant is good. And not everything, not every expectation you have should be instantaneous. Otherwise, the Bible wouldn't say that you need continued prayer. It says the earnest, continued prayer. It's the continued prayer. So, you know, and that doesn't mean that we constantly come to God asking. And, and that's the whole thing with prayer, which we're going to get into this. You know, prayer is not just asking. That's one part of prayer, but that's not the whole part of prayer. I think a lot of people think that that's what prayer is. Prayer is just asking God for things. But prayer, God's not like a, a jukebox where you're just pressing buttons. I want that one. I want that one. I want that one. He's not a, a vending machine. Prayer is a relationship with God. So asking is a part of it, but that's not all of it. And most people, if you ask them what is prayer, they might actually say that. They'll be like, oh, well, you know, it's asking God for what I want and what I need. No, that's a part of your relationship with God, but I pray that's not what your whole relationship with God's about, right? So prayer is not just an asking. That's why it says continued. You know, there's another uh, verse in the Bible that says that you don't have to, you know, prayer is not vain repetition. So prayer is not constantly coming to God just repeating the same thing or repeatedly asking for the same thing. Prayer is actually in the asking part. The asking part of prayer is that you go to God, you ask for what you want, you believe that you have it, and then you receive it. And then you walk in it. So even if you don't see it manifested, it's still, you still have it. If you believe that you have it, then you already have it. And it will manifest itself as you just continue to walk it out in faith. So, okay, so if I ask God about something, and then the next day, what do I pray about? Because I already asked him about that. I'm not supposed to, you know, vainly repeat things. So I'm not supposed to ask about that again. So now what do I talk about? If your relationship with God is all about you asking, then you'll have nothing to talk to him about, right? But prayer is communication. It's fellowship. It's give and take, right? It's not just talking, it's listening. Amen? So, and prayer is not just about asking. That's a part of it. So, so that's important that you know that. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power. Somebody say tremendous power. So if it makes tremendous power available, don't you think that whatever situation you're facing, if it had tremendous power working in it, would turn around? No? Nobody agrees with that? If you had tremendous power available, working for you in your situation, do you think your situation would change? Right? So then here's the, this is the remedy. This is the recipe. We want tremendous power in our situation to turn it around, to grow us up, to break us through, to whatever, whatever. 
we want tremendous power available in our life, then this is how we access it, through heartfelt continued prayer. Amen? So that's, that's, that's exciting to me because I'm like, man, this is such a key in God's word. This is what we have available to us. It's just like, you know, we could turn off all the lights in this room. If we turn off all the lights in this room, would there still be electricity in this place? Yes. There would be a lot of electricity available, right? But it's not available until you plug into it, until you flip the switch, right? Prayer is how you flip the switch, y'all. Prayer is how we plug into it. You know, like... I don't see an outlet or a socket, but, you know, like you can be looking at a socket. Let's say there's like an electric socket right there. It can be right there. And you'd be like, wow, it doesn't seem like that's doing anything. But you go stick your finger in it and you're going to get a revelation of just how powerful it is, right? So it's there. It's there all along. But you have to plug into it. And prayer, that's your bridge, man. That's how you plug into it. That's how you access the tremendous power that's available to turn your whole situation around. Isn't that exciting? So then it's like, oh, I don't got to complain about my problem. I don't got to go talk to, you know, X, Y, and Z about my problem so that they can just, you know, regurgitate it and, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't, I don't need to, you know, just go vent to somebody who's just going to feed my offense. Hello. Ha. I don't need to, you know, go Google all the answers to my problem. I don't need to go spend all this money, you know, at XYZ Doctor when I can actually find my answer in the word and I can find it in prayer. Amen. I can access my answer in prayer. If we actually believe that, we would see a whole lot of things turn around a lot faster than we can imagine. Amen. But you've got to put in the work. Someone say you've got to put in the work. And the work is not like the work of the flesh. It's the work of faith. It's the work of the spirit. Amen. People are like, oh, it's, it's not about works. It's not about work. No, it's not about your works that you're saved, that you don't earn your salvation. It's not your works that get you salvation. It's the free gift of God. But that is what empowers you to go do good works. Amen. And there is an, a, a natural outworking of what we believe spiritually. Amen. When you believe something spiritually, you're going to walk it out. You're going to work it out. It's going to show up in your life. Amen. So there is a work involved. There is something we have to put our hand to. Amen. There is something that we got to go do. I love the phrase, um, I forget, some great man of God said, I want to say it's Charles Finney. But he said, I pray like it all depends on God, but then I get up and I go work like it all depends on me. Amen. So you pray like it depends on God. You get your direction. You get your answer in your spirit. But then you just go working in that direction like it's already done. Isn't that what Jesus did? Like if you read in John 11, which we're not going to go there now. But John 11, when Jesus prayed, um, before he called Lazarus out of the tomb, I'll, I'll read you the one thing he said. It was John eleven forty one. He said, so they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Someone say, he heard him. He did. He heard him. I thank you that you have heard me. Yes, I know you always hear and you listen to me. But I have said this on account of and for the benefit of the people standing around so that they may believe that you did send me, that you have made me your messenger. And when he said this, he shouted with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out and out walked the man who had been dead, his hands and feet still wrapped in burial cloths and with a burial napkin around his face. Then Jesus said, free him of the burial wrappings and let him go. So, you know, I mean, look at that. He said, I know that you've heard me and I know, it's like, he's like, I know that you've heard me. Now I'm going to walk like you've heard me. I'm going to go act like I know you've heard me. Father, I know that you've heard me. Now let's go do. Right? He didn't just say, Father, I know that you heard me. You can send some angels now to move the stone. He said, Father, I know that you've heard me. Y'all move the stone. It's as good as done. So there's a lot of things that we pray about. But then we need to go act, act it out. We need to go walk it out. Amen? You need to walk it out like the answer's already been given to you. Amen? And sometimes it might be like, oh, you're reaching for a door and there's not even anything there. And then, boom, as soon as you actually step out, the door's there, right? So, so that's called walking on the water. Amen. Okay. Um, let's go real quick to Mark 11. One of my faves. You can't, like, talk about prayer and not bring this one in. Mark 11. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. I have exciting news, random, but um, we're finally getting real internet here, guys. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> um, Elon Musk and the Cyber Lords have finally gotten back to us about our Starlink. We applied for it like, I don't know, like a year ago, and they were like, oh, it's on hold for two years. We're like, what? <laughs> because there's no other internet out here and, and out here in these boonies um, that's not like dial up, that's not, you know, which is terrible. Anyways, so we're getting real great 
internet very soon. So praise the living Lord. Okay. See, the Lord answers prayers, guys. <laughs> All right. Mark 11, um, 22. And Jesus said, Jesus replied and said to them, have faith in God constantly. Isn't it amazing? It says have faith in God constantly. Why? Because the temptation is for you to have faith in God when you get all charged up in prayer service. But then you are tempted to not have faith when you go back and you look at your problem and it looks the same. But that's why he says have faith in God constantly. That's why he says also somewhere in here, somewhere in Hebrews, says we walk by faith, not by sight. Yeah, because if you walk by sight, then you're going to be like, woo. You're going to be, you know, you're going to be crazy if you walk by sight. If, and another way to walk by sight is to walk by your emotions. Do not recommend. <laughs> you know, like that's no different. People are like, oh, I don't walk by sight. No, but you walk by your emotions. That's the same thing. You know, one day you're happy, one day you're sad. <laughs> oh, they made your coffee wrong. Now you're, met, pat, you know, you're ticked off. Uh, so, you know, listen, you can't walk by your emotions. Your emotions will talk you out of the word of God every day of the week. Amen. So, have faith in God constantly. Truly I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, so we're talking about prayer here. Remember, prayer is not just asking. A lot of prayer, rather than just asking, that's one part of prayer. It's like a little bit of baby part of prayer. That's one part of prayer, right? But it, a lot of prayer is actually declaring the promises of God. And that's why the word and prayer, they go hand in hand. You've got to know the word so that you can declare the word. A lot of time in prayer, it's you declaring God's word. Amen? It's you putting a demand on your covenant rights. Amen? For example, like let's say, you know, hurricane did blow through here and just rip the roof right off this place. Praise the Lord, we got insurance, okay? So we're going to call the insurance company and we're not going to beg them and ask them to come fix our roof. Listen, you know, I know you guys are a really great company and you know, you've been in the industry for all these years. We'd really appreciate if you come and fix our roof. No, that's not how this works. It's, hey, my roof got blown up. Y'all better get someone out here as soon as possible to come get an estimate and let's get this process going because I, I need my new roof and I'm not paying anything for it because I, that's the kind of package that we have, right? It's like you just, you just put your order in for what is already yours. Those benefits are yours. If you understand the benefits and the terms and the conditions of your policy, then you have no problem, you have no shame, you have no intimidation, you also have no question. You just have absolute confidence that when I pick up the phone and put in a request for what I already have, for what is already paid for, you're like, you're just expecting it to show up, right? But people, why is it that people can put more confidence in a Flip an insurance company than they do in the word of God. Because this is your policy, yo. This is your policy. That's your terms. Those are your covenant terms. It's the book. That's why you got to know the book, amen. You got to know the benefits package that you've been given that's been purchased for you. Amen. What good is it, you know, we just, we just hang out here getting all wet and stuff because, you know, the roof was blown off and we'd just be like, yeah, you know, we don't know why these things happen. Sometimes, you know. The Lord's ways are higher than our ways and they will, you know, whatever. They'll pervert these scriptures and stay in their victimhood when it really it's like, no, man, this has been paid for. You are just too lazy to get on the phone and actually put in a request for what belongs to you. And some people, look, I'll give it, some people, it, it is ignorance because they've, been, they've not been taught these things, you know. And, and I believe that the Lord will hold the teachers of God's word accountable for that, you know. But not in this place. We don't have an excuse for that. you got to know that what's in this book, this is the terms of your covenant. And so prayer, a lot of prayer is not just asking. It's one part of prayer. A lot of prayer is just putting in your request and declaring what belongs to you. Declaring what God's word says about you. What God's word says about your situation. Amen. It's enforcing the terms of your covenant. Amen. It's putting a demand on your package. Your benefits package. Amen. It's like, you know what? I see that in the word and I want that. I see that healing is the children's bread. I think I'll have some of that. Rather than waking up every day feeling sick. Busted, broke, disgusted, I think I'm going to have what the word of God says, which says that I'm redeemed from every curse of the law. Amen. And I'm going to press in in faith until that reality becomes my reality. Amen. I'm going to get it in my spirit and I'm going to walk like I have it. Amen. Um, okay, I'm going to finish this first and then we're going to move on and then we're going to actually get around to the praying part here in about 10 minutes. Y'all still with me? I didn't mean to talk this long, but you know, 
You got, y'all got me all kinds of stirred up. Okay, so Mark 11, 22. Jesus replied saying, have faith in God constantly. Truly I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, see there you go. That's prayer. Say into the mountain. A lot of praying is just talking to your mountain. Not to your problem. Talk, not talking about it. Talking at it. Amen. Someone say, don't talk about it. Talk at it. There you go. Be lifted up and thrown into the sea. You tell that problem where to go. And does not doubt at all in his heart. Somebody say, does not doubt at all in his heart. Yeah. And let me tell you this. Let me give you, let me give you a little, little insider information here. It's not really insider because it's in the word of God. But it's, okay, when you don't doubt something in your heart, it means you have it in your spirit. Right? You get it in your spirit, man. It's like. And that's why time and prayer is so important. Time of the word is so important because that's where you're getting it in your spirit, man. It's getting like locked and loaded in there. But there are times where you can have something in your spirit, in your heart, yes, and your, your head might still be like going crazy. Like it's obviously always the goal to get the heart and the mind in agreement. And that's why it's a constant job and habit and discipline of ours as believers, to do what the word says in Romans 12 too, and to renew our mind to the word of God. So your mind's not talking you out. But there's times sometimes where you believe it, you believe it, you have it in your heart, and you don't doubt in your heart, even though sometimes your mind might be like yelling at you like, you crazy. Your mind might be telling you that. But if you got it in your spirit, just go boldly in that direction. And your mind, you know, whatever, just leave your mind behind. Just let your mind catch up when it's ready. Just do it without your mind being in full participation. <laughs> but just go in that direction. Amen? And, and do what you have in your spirit. There are things that sometimes the Lord will talk to you to do. He'll tell you to step out in faith and here and there in this area. And you got to boldly go in that direction. And your mind and everybody else's mind around you might be trying to talk you out of it. But when you have it in your spirit, then you can go boldly in that direction. Amen? But the opposite is not true. Some people, they try to convince themselves of the truth of God's word without getting it in their spirit. And so then they're just walking around with mental assent. And really they're just wishing and hoping and praying. Okay, I won't do it. But that's what, that's, they live in that place where they're actually wishing and they're like faking it till they make it. You can fake it till you make it or you can faith it till you make it. When you faith it till you make it, it's when it's in your spirit. You're just like, I know that, I know that that's what I'm supposed to do. I know that God called me to work in that field. I know that God told me that this is what I'm supposed to do. I know that God told me that I'm supposed to marry that lady. But your mind might be telling you, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, she's crazy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what your mind is telling you. But you got to follow your spirit. Amen. You got to follow your spirit, man. But the other way around is not right. Because there are things that you can convince your mind of. But if your spirit, man, is not in agreement with her, you don't have it in your spirit, you're not going to see the fruit of it. Amen. Just like um, there are some, some guys in the Bible, in the book of Acts, where they went around trying to cast out devils in the name of Jesus because they saw the apostles doing it. And they were like, oh, they did that. That was really cool. Let's try it. And they are like, in the name of Jesus. And the devils that were in those people jumped out, came out of them and jumped on them. And they went around uh, naked and running. Something like that. It didn't work out well because they were just trying to duplicate something that they didn't have in their spirit. They were trying to walk in an authority that they didn't actually carry, right? So it doesn't work the other way around. You want your mind and your spirit to be in agreement. But there are times, like I like how this says, it says you don't doubt in your heart. You don't doubt in your spirit, amen? You don't doubt at all in your heart. But you believe that what you say will take place, it will be done for him. Like there's things, even in this season, that the Lord has shown us in our spirit. And I know this is the case for a lot of you here. That the Lord's shown you in your spirit, man. You see it. You see what God's going to do. You see what he wants to do. And there's a part of you that even when you go to say it, your mind's like, don't be saying that because people are going to think you are crazy. And it does sound crazy. And sometimes, you know, Pastor Alex and I will talk amongst ourselves and we're like, like if anyone heard us actually say some of these things, they would think we we're crazy because we kind of think we're crazy sometimes too. Because that's what your mind tells you. But thank God, I don't live according to my mind. I'm living out of my spirit, man. I'm going in the direction of what I have received here. Like there's things that God has shown us even about this year that it's like, man, we already got it in here. So it's like there's a part of us that's already like rejoicing and walking in it. And we're just like, yes, this is so exciting. And then in the natural, you know, our minds are like, what you talking about? <laughs> What you talk about, Willis? <laughs> like it's crazy, but it's like it doesn't matter. I'm like, I don't care what my mind's saying because my spirit man is like there. You know what I'm saying? So you can follow there. And then that's where you walk boldly and confidently in that direction because I've already received it in my spirit. Amen? My mind will catch up. 
I don't care. I'm not listening to my mind. Amen. My mind submits to my spirit, not the other way around. Yes? Okay. I'm going to finish this first. For this reason, I'm telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you and you will get it. Someone say, you will get it. Going to get it. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. Hello. That's a whole message in itself. Forgive him and let it drop. Leave it. Let it go. Be like Elsa and let it go. Let it go in order that your Father who is in heaven may also forgive you your own failings and shortcomings and let them drop. You want God to let your problems or your sins drop? You need to let other people's uh, offenses drop. Amen? If you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your failings and shortcomings. So that's a big key to prayer. Amen? to having a successful prayer life is you got to like get rid of all the unforgiveness. Don't think that you can walk around with unforgiveness and then expect to have access to God. Because when you walk around with unforgiveness, you cut yourself off from God. Because he says in his word, if you don't forgive others, I can't forgive you. If you don't forgive others, there's no forgiveness for you. So how are we going to be praying and believing for things that are promises of God's word, they're gifts from God, but yet we've cut ourselves off from him through unforgiveness. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's like, you know, prayer life 101. Walk in forgiveness. Amen. If you've got problems with somebody, get your heart right. Amen. Get the unforgiveness out. Refuse to live in unforgiveness. And that's another message in itself. But just know, like, your prayer life will amount to absolutely nothing if you walk around with unforgiveness. And sometimes we get that on the big scale things, but it also applies to the little things. Like, oh, she looked at me dirty. Oh. You know, whatever. They didn't invite me. <laughs> you know, and like you don't even realize. Like you like carry around this like unforgiveness or like this resentment. And you can't, you can't, you can't do that and expect to get anywhere spiritually. Hello. Okay, so. But let's really quickly talk about this. And then, oh my gosh, and then we'll be done. So what prayer is not is wishing and hoping. And da -da. It's not wishing. Prayer is not like just shooting blindfolded. Prayer is not like just like um, throwing a dart and like just hoping you're going to hit it. You know what I'm saying? Prayer, your prayer should be accurate. It should be like hit the mark or most definitely get like on the target. You know what I'm saying? Like it should, it should land. It should not be like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, just hope for the best. A lot of people when they pray, they're in hope mode. But hope mode doesn't actually see the reality of what you're believing for. Hope, hope. remember, we talked about this a few weeks ago. Hope is like the billboard that shows you where to exit. Faith is actually taking the exit. Amen? It's like, oh, I'm there now. I got it. Right? So, but hope just shows you what's available. Hope is, hope is the menu. Yes? Faith is the order. Right? Okay? So hope is the menu. Faith is the order. Hope shows you what's on the menu. You're like, wow, it stirs up your expectation. You're like, wow, all of this, this is in the menu. This is for me. This is what my covenants package says. That's awesome. I don't have to live sick and broken, busted and disgusted. I don't have to live like, you know, in confusion. I don't have to live in torment. I don't have to live in fear. Wow, this is all in the word. It shows you what you can expect. But then faith is now applying your action to meet the condition to receive that what the word of God promises. Every promise in God's word comes with a condition. So our faith step is meeting the condition. Amen. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avail makes dynamic power available. So if I want dynamic power available, what do I need to do? That's the promise. Dynamic power available. What do I need to do? The condition is, is heartfelt continued prayer. You see what I mean? Every promise in God's word is like that. And his promises are not hard to keep. Amen. His his uh, conditions, I should say, are not hard to keep. The Bible says his yoke is easy, his burden is light. The Bible says that in Philippians 2.13 that he gives us the desire and the ability to do of his good pleasure. So the fact that you have a desire for the will of God, for the word of God, for the things that are in this word, that comes by the Holy Ghost. Don't you think that the same Holy Ghost that gives you the desire for the things in this book, for the promises in your life, that's... that's that is proof to you that the Holy Ghost is working in your life because he put the desire there. So if he put the desire there, he put the ability there too. So there's no condition in God's word that anybody says, oh, well, I just can't meet that condition. Yes, you can. If he put the desire there, do you want it? Yeah, I want it. Then guess what? He, the same God who gave you the desire is the same God who gives you the power to fulfill it. Amen? So every condition, there are conditions to see the promises of God, but those conditions are easily met because he gives you the power and the ability and the desire. Amen? So there's that. Um, all right. 
So what prayer is not, it's not wishing, it's not hoping. It's declaring his words, placing a demand. We've talked about that. Um, and prayer is not useful without actions of faith. We already, we already, okay, last, last point. We already covered that. Okay, so prayer speaks in faith. It declares the word of God. It does ask. It does put its requests in there. Um, there's so many scriptures we can go into. But I'm trying to wrap this up. But I want to I wanna let you know that one thing that you've got to get right with your prayer life, and it's what we just read here, is you got to get the doubt out. Somebody say, get the doubt out. Get the doubt out. Okay, because this is what happens to a lot of people. They, they, they come into a place of prayer, right? You get all charged up. You get in faith. You get all stirred up, especially when you're in the corporate gathering of the saints. Like, that's why that's important because that's going to – elevate your faith level. You can tap into the spirit of faith that's on this house, amen, that's on this ministry. There's an impartation of faith here. And you get to plug into that. You get to take it home with you if you want to. So, but when you leave that place of supercharged faith, when you leave that place where God has shown you things in your spirit about what's to come, about who you are, about the call of God in your life, all that, and then you go out to face your challenge or your problem, you have to be equipped to dominate doubt and to not allow doubt to have any access in your mind and in your heart. Amen? You can't doubt in your heart. And that's why the mind and the heart work together because if it hangs out in your mind too long, it's going to get in your heart. Yes? As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Right? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So you know what is one of like my biggest pet peeves ever? Like ever. Is when like let's say we have like a powerful service, right? Or someone comes for prayer and they like, they get prayer for X, Y, and Z thing. And then like as soon as the prayer is over, what's coming out of their mouth is, yeah, I just hope, I really hope that this gets better now. Or I, you know, yeah, but um, I, 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 I can't do that because, you know, I have this problem or whatever. Oh, yeah, 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 but I have to, I, I got to ask my doctor and see what they say. I'm like, did we not just pray about that thing? Was it not just settled in the spirit? And now what's coming out of your mouth clearly is saying that you've just given right over to doubt. That, you know, maybe you believed it for like 2.5 seconds. But as soon as you're out, you're out. And that's why it's so important, you know, that ministers teach people faith and how to stand in faith for themselves. Because if it's always about just getting prayer, there's a time and a place for that. But and, and there's a time and a place for agreement. But you need to be able to keep your miracle. Because you can come and receive a miracle in the anointing and in the presence of God. But your, your unrenewed mind will put you into doubt. And you'll, you'll lose it as soon as you walk out of here. Because you just fall back into the same patterns of thinking that, that is full of doubt. And that talks you right out of the word of God. That talks you out of the promise of God. Amen. It's like you come up here. We're like, hey, we're giving away a car. We pull your name out of a hat. And you get a car and you come up here. You know, we call your name. I'll use Olivia for example. And we give her a car and she's like, yes, I got a car. She sucks. I were all, everyone's excited. Everyone's crying. Everyone's rejoicing. Running laps around the room, doing black clubs. We're like, woo, she got a car. And, um, but then when she walks out, she, she hands the usher by the door. She hands him the key. She's like, that was great. I'll see you later. You know, she's like, I don't know how I'm going to get home. And she's out in the parking lot like hitchhiking, like asking people for a ride home. But that's what people do in their faith, you guys. Because they get a miracle, they get a radical miracle here spiritually, but they don't hang on to the keys. Because their mind is so consumed with the thoughts of doubt and that they just, they just give right up on what they received here. They just lay it down. They just leave it right here. They're like, oh, that was a great church service. I can't wait to come back next week and do it all over again. It's like, bro, this is supposed to go with you. This is supposed to follow you. You got to not just get in faith. You got to stay in faith. And that's why faith is not mental ascent. Faith is spiritual revelation. And it comes by the reading and by the hearing of the word of God. It comes by impartation of the gift of faith. There's a spirit of faith. Amen. There's a lot of ways to, to get faith by the word primarily. But there's a sure way to lose it, and that's through doubt. So you must be very careful what comes out of your mouth. And if the temptation to speak doubt over your situation is so there, you need to learn how to shut your mouth. And some people, they're like, oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm not going to say anything because, you know, I just I don't want to say anything. Don't just walk around quiet and you're just dealing with the doubt in your head. Like, no, it's not. A, like the way that you deal with it is you've got to deal with it spiritually. Because you can keep your mouth shut all day long, but that doesn't mean that you're not like, in, that doesn't mean that you're not dealing with doubt. Amen. 
Some people, you know what I mean? Like some people are like, well, you know, I don't want to speak negatively about this situation. If you're saying that, then you're already thinking negatively and you are therefore not in faith. When you are in faith about something, there's no talking you out of it. It's like, it's as good as done. So if someone asks you, hey, how's that thing you're believing God for? It's great. And you're like, if they actually saw the situation, they would think you're crazy. But you're looking at the situation and you've, you've crossed over. You're like, I don't even see it through the eyes, through my natural eyes anymore. I don't see it through the eyes of my emotions. I don't see it through the eyes of the economy or the eyes of the opinions of man. I don't see it through what I'm feeling in my body. I'm not looking at my situation through what my physical body is telling me. I'm looking at my situation through the eyes of faith and there's nothing you can say or intimidate or question me about that will talk me out of it. Amen? When you're in faith about something, it's on your lips. There's, the, the question is gone. The question mark has been removed. Amen. So I want to encourage you guys with that. Like we're going to go into this time of prayer. But I want you to pray like you have a weapon, man. I want you to pray like you can take off the head of every giant that you're facing in your life. Amen. And I also want you to pray not just for yourself and you and your four and no more. I want you to pray. We're coming together. You know, Pastor Alex said this a few days ago to me. He's like, I, I really have an urgency for us to spend some time in prayer as a church. Because there is stuff happening in this world right now in our, um, in our nation. And there's a lot of shifting happening. And sometimes, and, and, this is, and people don't pray about it because they don't think that their prayers are powerful. But we just read that our, our prayers are powerful. That they actually make dynamic power available. So when we come together and pray as a unit and as the body of Christ together, we are making power available to change this situation. Not just our own situations. Yes. Okay. But the situation out there. So engage your faith, not just for your stuff, but engage your faith for this community. Engage your faith for this nation. Engage your faith for what's going on in our government, for what's going on, you know, with all this stuff. You know, look, they're coming out and they're going to try to do the whole lockdowns and all that. And there's a part of me that's just laughing because I'm like, that's not going to, it's not going to work. But at the same time, we can't stay silent and we can't fall asleep at the wheel, okay. This is our time. Now's the time to pray, right. Now's the time to pray. A lot of people started praying back in, you know, 2020 when all the poo-poo hit the fan. And that's when they started praying. But now's the time to pray before the poo-poo hits the fan. Okay? We can pray the poo-poo away. <laughs> Add that to your prayer list. <laughs> pray the poo-poo away. So, um, but really, we have a job to do. And when you believe how powerful your prayers are, you'll do something about it. But if you don't think that your prayers are worth anything um, concerning not just your life, but the government and our nation and the leaders in our country, if you don't think that your prayers are powerful, then you're never going to apply the power of prayer. But there is power available, but it's up to you to enforce it. It's up to you to engage it. Amen? Amen. Well, y'all stand to your feet. We're going to pray. Uh, Brett, if you can put some music on in the background. And y'all feel free to move around here. We're just going to pray for maybe like 30 minutes. I'm going to call a couple people up to pray for specific areas, for specific things. But feel free, walk around, you know, whatever. Do whatever you want to do. But we're going to come before the Lord. We're going to pray for uh, categorically some things. We're going to pray for this church. We're going to pray for the families in this church. We're going to pray for our nation. We're going to pray for the youth. Um, and we'll pray for whatever else comes up in between there, okay? So Father, Lord, I thank you for this body of believers. I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you, Father, that you've given us your spirit. I thank you, Lord, that you've given us prayer. You've given us the weapon of prayer. You've given us this tool that we can employ, Lord. You've given us the power to bind and to loose. I thank you, Father, that you've given us that power. You've given us these keys to the kingdom, and we're not going to just leave them on the table. We will employ the power of prayer. We will pick up the keys that you've given us to unlock spiritual things, Father. I thank you, Lord, that there are things in heaven that are meant for earth, and that as we press in and prayer, as we press in in faith, that those things will be made manifest in our life, in our generation, in our community, in our circle, in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for this church. I thank you, Lord, for this mighty army of believers. I thank you, Lord, that you're raising up a 
generation that they're not going to be content to just go through mediocre life, Lord. But they're grabbing a hold of your word. They're grabbing a hold of every promise. They're, they're sharpening their character. They're coming to a place where they can steward the vision that you've entrusted to them, Lord. I thank you, Father, for the families in this church, Father. I thank you, Lord, for the marriages. That marriages will be supernaturally strengthened in Jesus' name. I come against every plan of the enemy to divide. I come against every attack of the enemy on the marriages in this church and I command you to cease and desist. You have no authority over these marriages in Jesus name. I thank you Lord for supernatural grace for supernatural grace, for, for your people to walk in love, for them to walk in, in, in peace, Father God, for them to walk in unity together, Lord. I pray, Father God, that you will bind them with cords that cannot be broken in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord for a grace on the husbands and the wives, Lord, to operate in their God-given roles, Lord, and to do them with, with such joy, with such grace, with such favor, Lord. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Come on, church, let's pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Mama ma kriya surbo bo kriya serbe kriya bon kriya ndere ben kriya sula mama ma kriya serbe kriyo sho bon kriya sere kriya serba ba kriya serbe be kriya sura mama ma mama kriya ser mama ma ma kriya su ura kriya sula mama kriya sura mama ma ma kriya su shere be be kriya bon kriya sera mama ma kriya ser mama kriya serbe kriya su father i pray for the singles i pray for the singles in this church lord I thank you, Lord, that you keep them, Father God, that you keep them. I thank you, Lord, that not one of them will fall into the trap of any Ishmael, but in Jesus' name, they will only have the Isaac. They will only have your promised blessing. They will only have the goodness of God in their life, that they will have no shortcuts. They will have no compromise. They will have no Ishmaels in their life, Lord. I thank you for supernatural grace on their life, to operate in patience, to wait for the, the gift of heaven in the spouse that you have chosen for them, Father. I thank you, Lord, that your, your word says that you lead them and guide them into all truth, that you show them things to come, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you prepare them to be the man and the woman of God that you've called them to be for their family, for their future family, Lord. I thank you that in this season of preparation, Lord, it's not wasted, but that you prepare their heart and their character. You prepare everything inside of them, Lord, to prepare them for the future that you have for them, Lord. I thank you for grace in the waiting. I thank you for patience in the waiting. I thank you, Lord, for favor and blessing, for supernatural contentment, even in the season that they're in. And I thank you, Lord, for supernatural provision in their life. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, in this season that they'll know you as their provider, Lord, that they'll not look to the right or the left. They'll not look for anything or anyone other than you, that you'll be the provider, not just of their finances, but the provider of their joy, of their peace, of, of their satisfaction, Father. Father God, that they'll find such joy in you, such joy in their relationship in you, Father. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for a blessing on their life, Lord, for a blessing on them in this season. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Jesus. Bon 
brevemente. E ci rabo bo su la mamma le allontura bali a su ci de bali a su. U la mamma le a su tera mamma man cria se papà che ci de bebe cria. Ben cria sa. Bun cria se le meme cria se la mamma mamma gere bebe in cria se re cria su. U la mamma le allo ci la baba se re ci de montura bon le a bon su la baba cria. Bu ci de baba cria se la mamma mon cria se re bebe cria sa. Sera mamma mamma ma cria su c'è la mamma cria ben griendere cria su c'è le tere bobo su la mamma 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 de ber un cria un dure ben cria se le mamma un cure bebe c'è ba se le bebe su tera mamma de le bebe in cire bebe se le bobo c'è la le le otture baba sa in cire mamma un cure bebe cria se la mamma mamma cria ben cria un dure ben griendere in cria un dure bebe cria se le mamma cria gira ba le le otture baba c'è Babo Suchila Mamancria, Bero Sula Mamandere Bendere 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 Bendere
child that has stepped foot in this church, Father God. Lord, from the young infants, Father God, to the teenagers, Father God, we pray, Father God. We pray for their life, Father God. Lord, they are set apart for you, Jesus. Lord, their lives are preserved from the snares and pitfalls in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for each and every one of them, Father God. Lord, that they may keep their eyes fixated on you each and every day of their life, Father God. That they are a light, a light, bright, bright, Father God, wherever they may go, Father God. It doesn't matter what age they are, Father God. There's no such thing as a junior Holy Spirit, Father God. They have the Holy Spirit right now. Father God, Lord, use them in a mighty way, Father God. Use them heavily for this generation that's to come, Father God. Lord, we're looking at five, ten years from now, Father God. They are going to do mighty, mighty things, Father God. Lord, that the parents, that the parents have the wisdom, the supernatural wisdom to lead them, to guide them in the ways that you have set for them, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for these children. Thank you, Jesus, for each and every one of these children, Father God. They will be a light, Father God. Lord, we cancel any lie from the devil. We cancel any attack of the enemy, Father God. Lord, that they are separated for you, Father God, and we thank you for their life, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, that they may fixate their eyes for eternity, Father God. Lord, that they may change the school system, Father God. Lord, that they may be nation shakers, Father God. Lord, that they may start taking things serious for the kingdom, Father God, even at a young age, Father God. Lord, that they heal the sick, cast out demons, even now, Father God. Give them the confidence, Father God, because they can do all things through Christ who gives them strength, Father God. Give them the confidence, Lord, to step into rooms and, and, and make a difference, Father God, to preach the gospel, Father God, with no shame, Father God. Thank you, Jesus, for these children, Father God. Thank you for each and every leader in this church that is directing those children in the way that they should go, Father God. Whether it's through the co-op, Father God. Whether it's through the children's ministry, Father God. Whether it's through the counselors of the youth, Father God. Lord, we pray mightily and heavenly in the name of Jesus for Kyler and Haley Allen, Father God. Lord, they know, Lord, that you may just show them mighty ways, supernatural ways on how to lead this youth, Father God, to make a difference. It doesn't matter if it's two put together or if it's 20 youth, Father God. They are going to make a difference in this community, Father God. And we just thank you for their lives, Father God. We thank you for each and every leader, Father God, that's making a difference, that's leading these children, Father God, in the way that they will go. And we just thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the children. Thank you for the opportunity that we have as parents, Father God, to lead them in the way that they will go. And Lord, we know that they will not depart, Father God. We pray for those children, Father God, right now that are adults that may not be walking in the way that they should go, Father God. But you know all things, Father God. And we trust you. We trust you. We thank you, God. We know that you have your hand on their life. And we just thank you, God. We thank you for the wisdom that you've given us in your word. Everything that we need to know, Father God, to lead these children the white ray are in your word, Father God. So as Pastor Lauren spoke about praying, Father God, we pray for the children, Father God. We pray that you give us supernatural wisdom to know how to lead them, how to guide them, each and every one of them individually and uniquely made to make a difference for your kingdom. And we thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. 
We thank you, Jesus. We fix our eyes on you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We honor your name, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place today. Thank you, Jesus. We honor your name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Katarabosha. Eshekoto. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Kataraboshi. Ishikoto. Osho koto so koto boshe. Eshe. Eshe koto. Ho sho koto. Thank you, Father. Praise God. Hallelujah. We love you, Father. We thank you. We praise you. You're so good. We put our faith in your word. And you said, Father, to pray for kings and all those in authority. We pray in the name of Jesus for all authority in our nation, all that are in the government. We pray for them in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We speak the name of Jesus over each one in our local government here in our community in Sorrento and in Lake County in the name of Jesus and over all our surrounding counties and this whole state and our whole nation, the United States, in the name of Jesus. We speak the blood of Jesus over everyone in authority and everyone in government. And we pray and we release your angels to go to them and talk to them. Hallelujah. Even if they don't know you, even if they don't serve you, we thank you that they make decisions in our favor for the kingdom that will advance the church. Praise God. We rebuke witchcraft. We rebuke every work of the devil. We say, Satan, take your hands off our nation. Take your hands off this city. Take your hands off this county. In the name of Jesus, take your hands off everyone in authority, everyone in government. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. We thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Holy Ghost. We thank you. We thank you for giving us favor with the government, favor with those in authority. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for this church. We thank you for everything you're doing through this church, through us, Lord. We thank you that no one in authority and no one in government will be able to hinder us. They will not be able to stop us because we're doing your work and you're with us. And if you're for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. We thank you for guiding us, showing us another way, showing us how to do the things you've called us to do. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your joy, for your joy, your joy. Your joy is bubbling. It's bubbling. It's bubbling in our bellies. It's bubbling in our spirit. It's bubbling up, coming out of our mouths. Ha, 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 ho, ho, ha, ka, ba, ka, ba, ho, ho, hey, hey, ha, ho, ho, ho. Ha ha, ha ha. Come on, brothers and sisters, get some joy and then you'll be able to pray. You'll be able to pray better. You'll be able to pray because you won't be praying sad. You'll be praying glad in the name of Jesus. Let the joy of the Lord flow in you. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, you heard it tonight. Prayer is not just asking. Prayer is listening and receiving from the Lord. 
Praise God. Let him fill you with his joy and praise him and thank him. Come on and thank him. Come on, be glad. Be glad. Come on, our God is good. He's not sad. He's not sad. He loves us. He loves us. He's with us. Come on and thank him. Come on and praise him. Come on and smile. Come on and be glad. Come on and don't be depressed. Be glad. Come on and be happy. Come on and be happy. Come on and thank the Lord. He hears your prayers. He loves you. He loves you. He's with you. He's for you. He's not against you. Come on and be thankful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. You're so good. You're so good. Kapobo shikabo shikabo shimana mo shi ashikara ba shambar mam derebo ko baba kibida mam banda baba kramim berembo. We pray for our community, Father. Everyone in the surrounding area. They need this. They need the presence of God. They need what you're doing here. We pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Give us whatever we need to get them here. Hallelujah. The facilities, the, the equipment, the favor, the permits, the documents, the signatures, the everything we need. We thank you for it. We receive it because the people, Lord, we're not here to do our own thing. We're here to do your thing, and your thing is people, and we want the people to be here and experience what we're experiencing. So give us whatever we need, and we thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, 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 Lord, for a supernatural harvest. Supernatural harvest of souls. For a supernatural harvest of souls in this area, in this region, in the Sorrento, in the Lake County, in the entire Orlando, Central Florida area. I thank you for a massive influx of souls. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that other churches will even get a hold of the fire of God for souls, Lord, for your passion for souls, Lord. I thank you that the gospel will go out unhindered in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that no devil in hell, no any kind of demonic legislation can stop us from preaching the gospel, can stop the gospel from going forth. I thank you, Jesus for open doors to preach the gospel. I thank you, Lord, for multitudes coming into your kingdom this year, even this year. I thank you, Lord, for creative ways to win the lost, Father. Lord, give us creative ways to win the lost. I pray for divine appointments, Lord. Divine appointments for every person here, Father, to win the lost, Lord, to preach the gospel, Father. I pray for unsaved loved ones, Lord, that as we go out and preach the gospel to somebody else's unsaved save loved one. Lord, that you send people to our unsaved loved ones. People that they will listen to. People that they will have an open heart towards, Father. I pray that the power of sin be broken off of their life in Jesus' name. I thank you that they will humble themselves under your mighty hand, that they will receive the word of God, that they'll receive the gospel, and that their lives will be changed, their lives will be restored, and they will be called a son and daughter of God in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Father, I thank you for a supernatural harvest of finances, Lord. I thank you, Lord. We are a body of believers sold out to your vision, Father, sold out to your plan, your purpose on the earth, to your kingdom, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you furnish us for every good work, Father, in abundance for every good work. I thank you, Lord, that you will use us to show the world what it is to be a son and daughter of God. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you, Lord, that we will be walking representatives.
representation of what it means to be in covenant with Almighty God. I thank you that our marriages will speak to that. Our children will speak to that. The health in our bodies will speak to that. Our finances will speak to that. That we're in covenant with you. We're in partnership with you. That you are on our side. That we are here with you. That we are doing the work of God in this nation, Lord. I thank you, Father, that you'll use us as a sign and a wonder. I thank you, Lord, that you raise us up to a platform that can speak into the lives of this nation, that can speak into the people of this nation. In Jesus' name, Lord. In Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for a supernatural harvest, for supernatural funds to be used as resources to build your kingdom, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you have empowered and, 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 and given us the creative power to create wealth, to establish your covenant. I thank you, Father God, that you would help us level up our stewardship, level up our ability to manage the resources you want to entrust us with, Father. Let us be found faithful stewards, Lord. Come and do a work in us. Do whatever you got to do in us, Lord, to prepare us to facilitate your plan on the earth, Lord. To prepare us to facilitate your finances, your resources, Lord. We will use them for your glory, Father. I thank you, Lord, that even before this year has ended, that we will see such a supernatural acceleration in harvest, such a supernatural acceleration, Lord, in resources coming into our hands to establish your covenant, to propel this vision forward, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Supernatural favor. Supernatural favor. Supernatural favor. Supernatural, supernatural equipment to get the job done. Supernatural equipment to get the job done. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you that promotion comes from you, Lord. Promotion comes from you, Father. Promotion comes from you, Father. Promotion comes from you. Promotion comes from you, God. Promotion comes from you. And there's no man, there's no other entity on the face of this earth that can withhold the promotion of God in our lives when we put you first, when we honor you, when we live according to your principles, Father. I thank you, Lord, that we are unstoppable. We are unstoppable, Father. I thank you, Lord. We always have the victory because of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I want you to begin to thank him. Begin to thank him for what he's doing, for what he's done, for what you're believing for. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're so good. Lord, you are so good. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness, Father. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Shundera baba kriya sera baba kriya suntera baba kriya sa. Besera baba kriya sutura baba kriya se kriya sa. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you honor. Lord, we give you glory. Lord, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you, Lord that we will carry this victory in our spirit. We will carry it to our mountain. We will carry it to whatever challenge we're facing. We'll carry it out. We will stay with it. I thank you, Lord, that you quicken us by your spirit with the word of God.
that any temptation to doubt what you have already done in the spirit will be far from us. And I thank you, Lord, that for every lie of the enemy that comes to try to talk us out of your promise, that your word comes to answer, that the word of God in our spirit, the word living inside of us comes to answer, to shut down every argument, to shut down every lie, to shut down every temptation to doubt. We thank you, Lord, that your word comes to answer. Your word in our spirit comes to answer, to shut it down, to overthrow it, to dominate every lie, to dominate every doubt, to dominate everything that contradicts your word hallelujah thank you Jesus hallelujah Woo! hallelujah come on thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus I'm telling you the presence of the Lord is here <laughs> in case you didn't know <laughs> hallelujah thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, y'all can return to your seat for just a minute here. We're going to do one more thing before we finish out tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Even the babies are getting touched tonight. Listen, you can't make kids do that. You can't make kids do that. They, they can do a lot of things, but they don't do that. They don't, they don't do that. They don't do that. Thank you, Jesus. That little man's never going to be the same again. Hallelujah. How many of you know it's good to bring your kids to church even on a school night? Amen. Come on. Tell you what, he needed that a lot more than he needs his beauty sleep, huh? Woo! <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Well, just before we finish out tonight, something that, that the Lord quickened to me as we were praying. You know, back in the Old Testament times, they were, they were commanded in the law that when the Lord healed them, when they were made clean, that they were to go and show themselves to the priests and bring an offering. So as an act of faith for us, I want you to give. We're going to give to the Lord tonight. We're going to thank him for what he's done. And let your gift, let it be in thanks to the Lord for what he's done. Amen? For what he's done. What you're believing for, what it's done. Amen? What you're believing for, consider it done. If you got it in here, consider it done. And now walk in faith like it's done. Amen? Give in faith like it's done. Amen? So let's worship the Lord right now. Ushers, y'all can come and serve us with offering envelopes if you want to give with offering envelopes. Or y'all know how to do all the online ways. But give in faith. Amen? Don't ever let an offering come by. Whether it's an offering, you know, that, that, we, that we take time to teach on. Or, or whether it's, you know something simple like right now don't ever let that opportunity pass you by or that you treat it lightly or you do it not in faith if it's not going to be done in faith don't do it at all amen you do it in faith amen do it in faith do it in faith amen do it to honor the lord and do it in faith for what he's done amen hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So precious. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> How old is he, Ariana? Seven. Has this ever happened to him like this before? Not like this. So precious. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. 
Well, ushers, y'all can go ahead and pass the buckets. And before we close out tonight, I'll just go ahead and ask, because I feel to do this right now. If there's anybody here and you just want prayer, you need some joy, you need some peace. I mean, if you didn't already get what you came for, if you just want some prayer, come on up here. And I want to have little man come and lay hands on you. So ushers, y'all help him up here. And anybody who wants some prayer, he's going to come lay hands on you. <laughs> and what's on him is going to get on you. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> y'all bring him up here. Bring him up here. <laughs> We might need two ushers, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you know if our kids have this, they're not going to want the crap of the world. They're not going to want anything that the world has to offer. Amen. <laughs> Is it good? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Is there anybody that wants prayer? Come on up here. If you want prayer, this is your moment. This is your time. Or if you just want to enjoy uh, watching him get touched, that's fine too. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Never the same again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Never the same again in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, man. Thank you, Jesus. Now I know how Pastor Rodney feels when he says, there's no way to end these services. <laughs> But I'll ask everybody to just, you can put a nice, uh, a good worship song on, Pastor Brett. And y'all just enjoy the presence of the Lord. Be blessed. Stand to your feet real quick. And we'll just pray you out. And you're welcome to hang out, continue praying, or just enjoy the presence of the Lord. But if not, we will see you tomorrow for the ladies coming for our Bible study. Or we'll see the rest of you Sunday. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, for every member here. Thank you, Lord, for just filling us with your presence for saturating us in your spirit tonight, God. I thank you for the victories that we saw in the spirit, Lord. I thank you that we'll just have testimony after testimony of everything that you've done, of everything that you're doing. I thank you, Lord, that we'll see mountains moved. I thank you, Lord, we'll see a whole generation of young people just like this, just overcome with your presence, just overcome with your anointing, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I bless each and every member. And even all of our visitors here tonight too, Lord, bless them, Lord. Make yourself so real to them, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for a week of blessing, of testimony, of miracles, of turnaround. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen. I love you guys. And we will see y'all very soon. See you Sunday.